everyone, mango 7 roll here. How are we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic 7. Uh, today we're going to do a video brought to you by Viratch. Somebody who sent me a PM in Discord when I asked like what, what people needed help with, what kind of videos people wanted to see. And they said, hello there. E7 has released two ice water units, uh, Elena and now the limited DN. People say Angelica is the best of the ice priests, uh, also known as soul weavers. Maybe a video that categorizes them by in which part they shine more and compare them. And that's actually a pretty good idea because if we look at the journal right now, we have uh, three, four, five ice soul weavers. So um, it's kind of important to choose which one you want to devote your resources into and to know why you're doing it. Uh, so one thing to go into this, I, I think most of these units are pretty broad like pretty much all of them except for maybe elena can be used for essentially the same things uh so i just want to get that out uh out of the way first so let's just uh talk about them one by one uh first one we're going to talk about is uh let's start off with Ither right now so Ither is somebody who just got an awesome skin that i'm pretty stoked about uh, he's got a slow on his skill one he's got a barrier on his skill two that also dispels two debuffs and increases the caster's combat readiness by 20 percent uh, he also has a barrier as well that uh, scales off of his attack. This one scales off of his attack as well. Uh, he also gets an uh, attack imprint and another attack imprint here. Um, overall, a pretty decent unit. He's one of the ones that just was really bad at the start of the game. Like, really, really, really bad. But luckily, with the changes we've got recently to him, he has gotten a lot, a lot better. Uh, to the point where I feel like he's definitely usable at this point in the game. Um, more importantly, because Aether Stigma instead of Molagoras, he's somebody you can use at the very, very start of the game and put like three to four skill ups in each of these and just never worry about it because you're not really losing much. You'll lose a bit of stigma, but it's not something that matters in the long run. Um, overall, I think he's a solid starting healer. I think he's okay for most things, but I don't think he really excels past okay. And I think he's the only Ice Soul Weaver that kind of sits in that spot right now where he just doesn't do as much as kind of the other soul weavers do uh he will work as a off healer for wyvern 11 uh i think with good good gear he can also tank it but very very unlikely to um probably gonna sit in your off healer spot just to get stuff done through that uh his artifact choices i think are pretty great too he can use pretty much any of them celestine is really good so when um, these two are on cooldowns because they're three cooldown and two turn cooldowns. So when those are both on cooldown, you can get a Celestine heal. You could also use Rod of Amaryllis, which does do a ton of healing with both skill two and skill three. Um, you could also use Makahara's Tome to uh, pump through your turns as fast as possible. And this is going to be a pretty common thing throughout uh, throughout this video is these artifacts here. Uh, with his guard as well... Um, you have the Dispel for two debuffs, so I don't know if Wondrous Potion is really necessary, especially for the earlier games. I feel like uh, it's just easier to go with your Guard Dispel instead. Um, but obviously, if you don't have access to the Celestine or the um, Magara's Tome or the Rod of Amaryllis, then something like Wondrous Potion will work as well. So overall, I rate him pretty great for early game, but that's honestly about it, uh, unless you're using him for his adorableness. Next up is Angelic Montmorency, and A Momo is on another level uh, than Aether. She is just one of the best units in the game right now, and I, I feel like everybody should have her in their arsenal. Uh, you can see her stats here. She's even faster than him, um, <laughs> if anything. Uh, she has immunity with dispels. She has more dispels, more heals. She's got basically everything. She's such an insane, insane unit when combined with her uh, skill tree. Uh, the other thing is, too, much like Aether, is you do not need to use Molagora for her skill ups, which is something that is just awesome. F pretty much everybody should have, like, an A Momo eventually with, like, skill 2 and skill 3 maxed, and honestly, even skill 1 maxed because it's so cheap to do. Um, I definitely rate her pretty much near 10 out of 10 for PvE, pretty much near 10 out of 10 for PvP, uh, pretty much near 10 out of 10 for everywhere except for Arena Offense, IMO. Um, she also might be very good for uh, RTA slash World Arena when we come to it just because she does so much and she also sleeps. Having an extra 35% um, chance to sleep is nothing to scoff at. It's a lot. Um, but the problem is, if you're a newer player, 
and you're sitting there with like a Momo or regular Momo and Aether side by side, um, Aether might be the better choice for a long time because you're going to need to get all the runes farmed for a Momo. You're going to need to get a spec change. So all of those things. Um, so maybe it might be smarter to use Aether right at the start over a Momo if these are your only two options. But overall, a Momo is going to be best than pretty much anything you can get. She's such an insane unit. Uh, same artifacts as before, but primarily I would uh, go for either Rod of Amaryllis or Magahara's Tome. I personally prefer Magaha Maga I hate the name of that tome. I personally prefer Magara's tome because it just cycles through so fast and it just pisses people off um, when you have it on her. Really good for Guild War offense, really okay for Guild War defense too, just an all-around solid unit. And then we have our girl Angelica. She was pretty much the be-all end-all at the start of the game, um, but I don't know if she's less useful now or maybe a Momo is so good. So the one thing that really bothers me over Angelica uh, when comparing with a Momo is she has Mulagora. So it's going to take you one, two, three-ish Mulagora at least into her guide to the goddess. Um, and you'll probably want some in here too to really get the effectiveness out of her. So that's already one hit against Angelica right now. But the other really good part about her is she's fantastic early game. Getting this to minus one turn cooldown on an early game uh, account and having her with something like Prophetic Candle, she's one of the better uses of Prophetic Candle is just absolutely insane if you put her in your tank spot. Um, she's also pretty good for Guild War offense a lot of times. She can tank a lot of Charles until the end of time. She can tank a lot of other um, water units and earth units and fire units, no problem. And I think she's honestly underrated for where we are now. Um, but she is there for you if you need to do that. I think she's pretty close to 10 out of 10 for PvE, especially early game PvE. And the more you need to survive, the kind of better she is. Uh, she's not really offensive, which is a problem for some people. But uh, she's just a great unit overall. And I think she fits basically everywhere except for Arena. Because um, she works in Guild War offense especially. She works in... PvE, um, she camps really well. That's the other thing. Amont Morrency camps like a boss as well. Um, and as I'm doing this video, I'm realizing the problem is that pretty much all of these Ice Soul Weavers kind of share the same purpose, you know? They kind of share the same plan to do things with, you know? Like they all have essentially similar things. They all do essentially same things, um, except for the two five stars. They're the two that kind of stand out a little bit in terms of uniqueness. And there is DN here. Uh, I talked about Dian, I think, in the video yesterday, so if you want a full guide on her, there's that for you. Uh, but she's great because she just has so many useful buffs that you don't generally get from your Soul Weavers. Like, not many Soul Weavers um, buff your attack, especially the Ice ones. I believe she's the only one. Um, she also does critical hit resistance, which, again, not many people do at all. Uh, she has AoE dispels and a barrier on her skill, too. And uh, the other cool part about her is her heals don't really scale off of her stats, which makes it so um, you can kind of focus on her speed much more than anything else. Uh, Dien kind of shines everywhere. Um, she she shines for PvE, she shines for PvP, she shines for Guild Wars. Basically, every point in the game, Lab especially with her camping, she does shine and she is awesome there. Uh, you can use her with Rod of Amaryllis, you can use her with Magara's Tome, you can use her with Celestine, pretty much any of the above will work and uh, she will excel everywhere. Uh, I think one of the big differences here between Dien and the others is um, if your Dien isn't on a, a Rod of Amaryllis or a Celestine and is really fast, She's probably not going to solo heal as well as Angelica. So a team with Dien might need another side healer, whereas Angelica will be able to heal a whole team by herself, no problem. And the same goes for Amont Morrency. And I believe the same goes for Aether. So keep that in mind if you're using Magara's Tome. It's probably like a secondary healer or on a team that doesn't really need too much healing. So then we have Elena, my newest waifu to the game, and she's definitely the most unique out of all the healers we have here. Her skill one is a dispel from two different units on your team. Um, her second one is a reduction to all damage, 15% when Mulagorad, uh, all AoE damage I mean. It also has a heal attached to it whenever somebody AoEs you. Really, really solid unit. And this one also procs invincibility on her skill three, 
and it has effect resistance buff, something that is super useful and I think uh, especially awesome for the future of PvE content as well. So Elena herself, I don't know how good of a healer she is unless you're running her on, I would say, Celestine. That's the only real way you're going to get a ton of healing off, especially if you're running her on a counter set. So she's often used as a secondary healer, much like Dien is, I would say, or just somebody to negate a ton of damage. Um, like I said before, I think increased effect resistance for two turns is going to be something that might be useful for future PvE content as well. Uh, but overall, I, I think Elena is yes less useful overall than the other units, but more specifically useful in specific areas. So... Those are all the five Soul Weavers, and I realize as I talk about all of them, like I said, they're all pretty similar, and you really um, have a choice here. There's no right answer. Like, there's no pick Angelica because she's the best, or pick um, DN because they're the best. And if there is somebody that stands out like that, you know, if I was going to say pick this one person because they're the best, it's no doubt going to be a Montmorency. Not only is I think... Uh, not only do I think she's the most versatile, but she's also free for Molagora, doesn't take any whatsoever. Um, she's also a three star, she's just one of the best units in the game right now, and she's the one that stands out the most. As for number two on the list here, I would probably place it as Elena, just because she's so specialized in what she does, and nobody else really does what she does. After that, I would put a two-way tie between Dien and Angelica and get kicked out because it's the day to uh, go into our login, which we'll get a summon for, by the way, so at least you guys get that. Um, so I would definitely have those two lined up next to each other, just because they're both kind of good in their own way. And finally, probably way down at the bottom, I'm going to be ranking Aether, just because Aether is kind of... He's not the best unit right now, you know? He's just... He's just... He tries his best, and he's adorable, but it's just... He needs a little more still. Um... And the other thing is, maybe he doesn't need more. Maybe maybe A Momo is just too good. Uh, so let's do our summon here. Uh, surprise, surprise, we didn't get anything. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for now. I hope this helped out. I, I know this is another ramble video, but that's kind of what I'm in the mood for right now in E7. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this helped out new players. This is obviously not something for all sorts of players, right? Because... Um, we're going to get a summon right here too. We'll, we'll do an ML summon for you folks as well. Uh, this is obviously not a video for everybody because this is for the newer players that are trying to decide where to put their resources. So let's just do a quick little ML summon here and uh, say goodbye. So thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe as always. And I will talk to you folks all later um, Welcome. as we do this summon. Dun, da, da, da. And we get nothing. The only thing I can get here is an Eaton. So have a wonderful day. You all are awesome. Bye, everybody.